zeros. So what you guys need to do here is just like we did in our first focus lesson, you want to replace f of x with 0. Okay. Now, always look to factor out a GCF. Do they have a common factor that we could factor out? Yes, they have an x, right? Okay. Now, I want to see, can I continuously factor this? So what I do is, I say, well, if I'm going to factor that, it's going to factor into two binomials. Right? And I know 3x times x is the only thing that's going to give me the 3x squared. So now I need to think about what are all the numbers that multiply to give me negative 2. So I can write in here negative 2 could be negative 2 and 1, or 2 and negative 1. So we only have two options, guys. Right? We only have two options. Well, let's think about this. If I put a 2 here, forget about it being plus or minus. If I put a 2 there, that's going to give me 6, right? I need to add that, or you're basically subtracting because one of them's negative. I need to subtract that from x. Well, that's going to give me like 5x ever. Like It's never going to give me anything larger, because if that's a 2, that means that's a 1, right? So 3x times 2 is 6, and that's 1. Is a difference of 6 and 1 ever going to be close, ever going to give you your middle term of negative 1x? No. So I know the 2 has to be here, and the 1 has to be here. Now, this middle term is negative. That means the larger of these two, so what I do, 3x times x is 3x squared. 2 times 1 is negative 2. That means one of these has to be negative. Then again, we find our middle terms. By multiplying these two and these two, I need to get negative 1x. So that means the larger of my two products should be negative. So which one's larger? 3x times 1 is 3x. 2 times x is 2x. Which one's larger? 3x times 1 is 3x. 2 times x is 2x. 3x times 1 is larger, so that means that needs to be negative. That's positive. Again, let's check to see if this works. 3x times x is 3x squared. Do FOIL. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. 3x times negative 3x is negative 3x. 2 times x is 2x. Do you guys see how I factor that correctly? Yes? OK. So then I have 0 equals x times 3x plus 2 times x minus 1. Now, we, like in your focus lesson from first chat quarter, you apply the zero product property. And then you solve. OK? And there you go. That's it. Um, we don't have time to go over your test today. and. We could go over your assignment organizer. 